Shelford, tight head, Alan Wetton, Fox. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rugby Wrap Up Everything Footy and More. I'm Jonathan Wicklow Barber, your host. We have the pleasure of being here with Mr. Michael Jones, arguably the best in rugby ever. Mr. Jones, on a scale of 1 to 10, Denzel Washington's Hucker. In terms of the performance level and his level of expertise, probably a three or four. But in terms of the wow factor and the buzz for us, a ten and a half. He got the tongue out, the pukanga, uh, which was pretty good. I mean, that you got to finish with a really strong pukanga. Yeah, that one. That's it. So the skinny on that one is he was a three. Yeah. <laughs> Field, here's Michael Jones. Look at this. Where's the support? Kerwin. Sensational try. Who, in your estimation, is the worst dressed all black ever? That guy. That guy. That guy there. Most definitely that guy. Mate, I'm very busy. I don't want to be here with you. You know, I've got uh, movie contracts to sign and, you know, uh, commercials to do and stuff like that. I'm going to have to concur in on that one. Mm. You scored the first try in the first World Cup in 1987. What was that like? Oh, mate, mate, oh, that was amazing. I mean, it was, I mean, it was one thing, you know, fulfilling a dream to play for the All Blacks and then, you know, go out in front of um, Crowd Eden Park and, you know, you, you, you do the, you, you sing the national anthem and then you, you do the haka and you have, your, you know, Buck Shafford, who I looked up to as a sort of a teenager and he's leading the haka. You feel like you could run through a brick wall and then be the first person to score the. Amazing. A try. I mean, uh, you know, I couldn't have asked for an, a, a better debut. Did you think that would be the only World Cup that our country has? Well, you know what it's like back home in terms of just the uh, the pressure to, to, to keep on winning. And I must admit, Jonathan, where I, I actually thought, felt that very strongly that would would win the next one and would win the next one and would win the next one. I mean, I'm just glad that you haven't jumped off the Auckland Harbour Bridge yet, mate, because I know you... I have. I have. You survived. I, I, I bonged you bunch of, you came back up. <laughs> Went right back up. <laughs> okay. Well, there is Michael Jones, very talented and brilliant flag forward off the back of the lineup. He and Shump would be the two leading players. Well, you ticked off when they moved you from open side flanker to number eight. I transitioned Michael, at the Michael six, Jones. actually, more than the eight, but... Yeah, that's what we meant. <laughs> you just can't count, eh? Right. <laughs> that's why I'm wearing glasses. Yes. So, uh, no, uh, not at all, because I had had a serious knee injury in 1989. So I've only really played two years of my career with two good knees. After that, I sort of had a one pretty average knee. So um, I admit that I sort of lost a bit of pace. And um, I still had the skills, I think, and I still had the, the um, capability and the expertise to be a good loose forward. But I just had to reinvent myself as a number six. So you took a lot more shortcuts, but you just knew how to get to the breakdown um, in support of the number seven really quickly. So it worked out pretty good, actually, and um, I'm, I'm glad I made the move. I love number six. Did you ever try to fool the opposition by wearing a bandage or a pad on the good knee? <laughs> That's, uh, actually, I should have thought of it. Mate, where were you back in the in the 90s when I needed you? I was uh, just south of Stewart Island. I didn't, yeah, apart from being south of Stewart Island. I just didn't even think of it, you know? It didn't even cross my mind, but I should have. Um, but one thing I did do was uh, learn really quickly not to even, if I could, not to even strap my knee. Just sure. just to know that everything's okay. In terms of the way you think, I think it was good because hopefully the opposition didn't think I had May any... May have been unsure. Didn't think I had any weaknesses, hopefully, right. in my right. knees. And you had the broken jaw. Broken jaw, gosh, yeah. Two titanium plates here and training for the All Blacks on a tour and I broke it playing touch rugby. You know what we're like down under New Zealand, mate. There's no such thing as touch no, rugby. No, there's no such thing as touch, you know, unless, you know, so yeah. the touch was like yeah. that. Yeah, I gotcha. I mean, I wouldn't break your this jaw. There's no way. It's like cast mm. iron jaw. Mm. Well, it's all fake. Fake jaw? Yeah, fake jaw. <laughs> That's a whole other story. That'll be our next segment. Fake jaw. <laughs> okay. <laughs>